Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today's topic happens to be Greek and Latin words. Now, throughout most of our studies in science this year, we have run across a lot of weird-sounding words such as endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, cellular. Uh, a lot of these words are Greek and Latin, and why is it that scientists like to use these really long, crazy-sounding words? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, Greek and Latin, um, mostly the Latin, Greek is still used, but the, the Latin words are considered a dead language. In other words, nobody speaks Latin anymore as their first choice of, of a language. Yes, um, there are some people within the Catholic Church that still speak Latin, but it's not their choice uh, of language to use. It's not what they grew up with. And so because it's a dead language, the meanings of the words don't change anymore. Now, English, on the other hand, is a living language, and English is constantly changing, constantly evolving. And here's a couple examples that I wanted to show you. Now, this is from Middle English, which I believe is somewhere around, um, it's like 800 to 1400, about 600 years term. Now, I want you to try to read this. And um, stop the tape here and then see if you can figure it out. Now, I'll read it. When that April with his shower soot, the drought of March hath pursed the root and bathed every vein in switch liquor. What? Uh, what does that mean? Well, here's the translation. Oh, sorry, one more line. Of which virtue engendered is the flower? Well, this is poetry at its best. What does it mean? When in April the sweet showers fall and pierce the drought of March to the root and all, the veins are bathed in liquor of such power and brings about the engendering of the flower. So this person is writing about how when it rains, we get flowers. April showers may bring flowers. It tells you how our language has changed over the years. Latin, on the other hand, is a dead language, and so the words are not changing. Now, why is it that we should be learning about Greek and medical, Greek and Latin words in um, medicine? Who cares? What does it matter to you or me? Well, here's a possibility. Now, let's say that you and your really good friend in a couple of years are out driving, and all of a sudden you get into a really bad car crash. By the way, this was a Ferrari. This Ferrari lost control and hit a um, telephone pole and literally got sliced in half like it was going through butter. But anyway, let's say that you and your best friend both end up in the hospital. Both are taken to the emergency room. You are banged up in pretty bad shape, but your best friend is unconscious. They rush him or her over to the ER and then they take your friend and they're tanking them up to surgery and as they go by you say to the doctor, doctor what's going on? What's wrong with my friend? And the doctor says, I'm sorry I can't talk right now. Your friend has a subdural hematoma and we have to do surgery right away. I'll get back to you later. And you're thinking, what the heck's a subdural hematoma? I don't know what a subdural hematoma is. What does this mean? Well, I've taken one Latin class, and I've studied a little bit, but I've never had this taught to me in my science classes. And if you know a little bit of Latin, you might be able to figure out what a subdural hematoma is and try to understand what it is that your friend is going through. Now, let's take these two words, subdural hematoma, and break them apart and look at each part of the word because it's actually made up of several parts. You have sub, dur, ul, hemat, and oma. Where have you heard sub before? Subway, submarine, substitute? Well, sub means below. Dur, that it refers to your skin. And al, that means pertaining to, regarding to. It's kind of a connecting word. Hemat, well, hemo and hemat both mean the same, and that means blood. And lastly, oma, 
That means tumor. Now, if you can kind of put all those parts together, you can come up with what subdural hematoma means. Kind of start from the back and work your way forward. So, what do they mean? It literally means blood tumor below the skin. Serious stuff. Or, more specifically, a blood clot on the brain. If your friend has to be rushed into surgery, they are in deep doo-doo. They've got blood on the brain, they're still bleeding, there's a clot that's, that's developed, and your friend is in serious, serious times here. So this is, yeah, this is nothing to be meddled with. Now, there's basically two word types that we're going to deal with when studying Greek and Latin. There are root words, and there are ending words. The root words, you'll notice, have this slash O next to them. So anytime you see this slash O, you know that that is a root word. Whereas at the ending words, you'll notice them, the ending words will always have this dash and then the word after it. So if you look for those two things, that'll help you out a lot in determining which is a root word and which is an ending word. Now these are just six examples we're going to go with. Hepat, O, liver. Arthro, joints. Hydro, water. Phobia, fear of. Itis, inflammation or swelling of. And ology, study of. Rule number one. When combining two word parts, don't use the O when the ending starts with a vowel. You may have noticed that there was a slash O. And that means that sometimes that O is used and sometimes it's not. If the ending starts with a vowel, A-E-I-O-U, then you do not use that O. If it begins with a consonant, then you do use it. For example, let's say we're going to combine hepato and itis. Well, itis, that begins with a vowel, so we would not be using the combining O. And when you put the two together, you get hepatitis. All of you, hopefully, have had a shot for hepatitis. Hepatitis is a liver disease. Let's say we combine arthro and itis. Again, do we use the O or not? Well. Itis begins with a vowel, so in this case we do not use the O, and when you combine the two, you get arthritis, swelling of the joints, something I get to deal with every morning. And lastly, if we combine hydro and phobia, well this time the ending begins with a consonant, so now we do need to use the O, and when you combine the two it becomes hydrophobia, fear of water. By the way, hydrophobia is an old term for a disease called rabies because a lot of times you would see like an animal would be frothing at the mouth and they thought that it was afraid of water it wouldn't drink it so that's where that name came from. Rule number two when writing the definition for a word look up the last part first and the first part last. Let's say that we want to find out the definition for hydrology. Well, hydrology has two parts to it. You have the ology part and the hydro part. We'll start by looking up this part first, and then we'll look up this part second. Ology means study of and hydro means water. When we put the two together then it's not water study of, it becomes the study of water. Last part first, first part last. Okay, this is a short little bit about Greek and Latin and we'll be spending much more in class. Make sure that you add something to the briefs and also the summary. And we'll see you next time.